Hey, Scott Fraser here with TBiz TV. I want to show you one of the quick tips that I use all the time when I'm doing separations. You know, I do separations all day long, and I get files in from customers, and I get really good quality files. I get crappy JPEG files, and I'm always amazed at the files I get that I know were probably better in a different program, probably better in a, in a vector program like Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw. But this is the tip of the day. The tip of the day is to always turn off what's called anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing is a computer graphic program's way of softening an edge. Now, it's, it's designed so that if you're going to print the paper or going to print out anything that's going to be maybe uh, a large image, you want to soften those jaggies. The problem with anti-aliasing is, is that when we get jaggies and we soften them in our graphic files, all of a sudden when we separate the file, we separate those colors. Because if you have a file with like a really hard edge that's red and you give it, you turn on anti-aliasing when you open the file up coming out of a vector program, you now are getting pinks and grays and softening on that edges. And then you separate the program in a program, the file in a program like TCEPS and it sees all those colors and you spend way too much time erasing all that stuff later on on each individual channel. Now I'm talking about when you're working with a file that you bring out of CorelDRAW or Adobe Illustrator. Uh, as an EPS or a PDF or an AI file, open it in Photoshop, and when you open the file, you're going to be asked what format you want. And let's take a look at that right now. If we open a file in Photoshop that was built in AI or Corel, we go to File Open, and it could be a PDF, again, could be an EPS, could be an AI, any format that Photoshop will read. Photoshop won't read a CDR from Corel. This is a file that was built in a vector program. It's really a vector file, but it's easy to separate in Photoshop and easier to do sometimes choking and trapping. And it's a pretty simple file. This is a file that's an EPS file. Double click on it, and what happens is you get this window that comes up, and this window is the one that you blow by. And if you blow by this window, you just screw up a good file. Keep in mind, Photoshop's taking vector images and going to rasterize them. And so this window comes up, and the default resolution is 72 dpi. Now, we know that this is a vector file we're opening up in Photoshop, and we're going to rasterize it. And we have got to change this resolution. If you're concerned about 300 dpi not being high enough resolution, change this number to 400 or 500 dpi. But typically 300 dpi, I'm changing it right now, is the right resolution. We're going to open the file as an RGB. And so the key thing is don't miss the resolution setting and do not miss the anti-alias checkbox. Uncheck anti-alias. Uh, if you don't do that, you're going to have really soft edges that will then be part of your separations. We say OK. And the file opens up in Photoshop. Now if we zoom in on it, click on the Zoom tool and zoom in. Yes, we can see jaggies as we get really close. This was a vector file that we rasterized. Those jaggies are 300 pixels per inch. And that's acceptable for screen printing. Again, if you don't like jaggies, if you're what I might call a vector snob and you don't like that, open it up at 4 or 500. But let me show you the difference. I'm going to close this file out. Let's open the same file. And we're going to leave it set for the default of 72 dpi with anti-aliasing turned on. That's the default. Leave anti-aliasing on. Now from a distance, the file looks fine. We start zooming in on it. And not only is it low res, but the anti-aliasing has softened the edges by putting grays there. These are all different colors. So when you separate this program, this file in a program like TCEPS, you're going to see these things. This is going to separate all those gray levels, these, these yellow levels, any of the pink levels. Now you're thinking, well, okay, he opened the file up at 72 dpi. That's going to be a low res file. But let me open up the file again, and I'll make it 300 dpi, RGB, and I'll leave anti-aliasing check, though. So now we're going to be at high resolution for this file, and but we're leaving anti-aliasing checked. Now we zoom in, and what we see again is this soft edges. See those grays? When you separate this file, it's going to it's going to pick up all that information. It looks good from a distance, but when you get close, there's lots of grays going on there. With anti-aliasing turned off, you'll either have black or you'll have white. You won't have that hard edge that or that soft edge. So turning off anti-aliasing is very important.
Now here's a file that's already been color separated. This file was built in Corel Draw, exported as a PDF, brought into Photoshop, separated with TSEPs. Some tweaks were done on it because it does nice gradations. TSEPs builds the underbase, builds the high highlight, makes it a little easier. And let's say we want to spread the word custom printed t-shirts over the underbase, spread it slightly, which would be making it a little fatter. Anti-aliasing, if you recall, uh, is available with many of the tools. We just showed how anti-aliasing happens when you open a file. But if you go to like the selection tools like the magic wand you'll notice that anti-aliasing is available right here and you can check it or uncheck it now it is set default checked in Photoshop if you uncheck it Photoshop would remember this but let's just pretend we want to spread the word printed we'll do the just the word printed not do the entire line and we just look at it by itself if I use the magic wand and remember I have anti I'm gonna check anti-aliasing if I have anti-aliasing check use the magic wand and I'm gonna click Shift click, shift click, shift click, shift click, shift click, shift click, shift click. I'm just going to stroke this, which makes it slightly fatter. If I go to edit stroke and I give it a black stroke, I stroke from the center to help cover up any of these soft edges you might already have. If this file was opened up with anti aliasing turned on, it'll somewhat override them. And if I say OK and we zoom in now, you can see that it has a gray edge around it. This is not desirable. You can see we stroke the entire outside edge of this, but because anti-aliasing was checked. When I print this out now, this little gray area will print as halftone dots, and your whole text will look like it's got jaggies, major jaggies, and you'll think it was a resolution of the file when it was a resolution of the file at all. It was the actual halftone dots because this was a gray level. Let's undo this. Now, here's the key thing. We have to turn off anti-aliasing not a problem we have to reselect it once you select it with anti-aliasing turn on you can't then uncheck anti-aliasing and come back and stroke it you've got to come back to your magic wand tool uncheck anti-alias now click shift 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 click and now edit stroke Give it a six pixel stroke. I'm doing it boldly so you can see it. I might normally go four or five pixels at 300 dpi. Say OK. And now we zoom in. And now we have a hard edge. Simply because we left anti-aliasing turned off. This is an important thing to remember when you're doing separations and when you're opening up artwork in Photoshop is always remember to turn off anti-alias. So the tip of the day is to always remember to watch and turn off anti-aliasing in Photoshop. Now remember, Photoshop normally remembers your checks. If you uncheck something, Photoshop remembers that. But if you ever opened Photoshop in the past and know that it opens occasionally as the default setting, meaning it forgot its preferences file, anti-aliasing will be turned back on. But once you start turning it off in some of these windows, Photoshop should remember them. Thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed the tip.